I want to point out just a bunch of things from start to finish about what we could take away from this graph. Um, but first, I also want to show the six months chart because what I like to do is I always like to zoom out to like the larger picture uh, before hopping into any play. So like I know uh, what the potential is. So we have the daily trigger right here at 989. Okay, and we know that uh, the hourly trigger is a great acceleration level, but the daily trigger is usually an even more powerful acceleration level. And you know, once Hood crosses 1140, the weekly trigger is even a stronger acceleration level, and this is when we can expect a possible uh, ear pocket fill to 2347. That's why we're keeping our eyes on Hood above 1140. But so we could see from the six month chart that the daily trigger is at 989. Okay, so removing everything else. This was, you know, a very important level to break above. And so I knew that level going into the day. And I'm watching this uh, day trader chart. And I'll just zoom in on this last part. So let's put in the five minute velocity. OK. Um, actually, let's start with the one minute. All right. So can you guys see what I see uh, by looking at this chart when price starts making these lower lows under the hourly trigger? I'll remove even this. Okay, so <clears throat> what this tells me, right, the significant one minute negative divergences, which is bullish divergence, we can see price make a lower low right here, that's your first divergence, a second lower low right here, that's your third diver that's your second divergence, and then a third lower low right here at 957. Um, all right, so we had 957 right here, okay, and here was your most extreme one minute print to the downside, negative 0.02. Okay, so then we count. This is your first. This is your first new low, with not a new, uh, with not an extreme downside print to the downside. So this is your first divergence right here. Hope everybody's following. You can look at the one minute velocity here was way more extreme than it was here, and so that makes this your first divergence. 957. We come down here. 958. So still not real divergence. 957 again, and the one minute velocity is just way less extreme than it was here. So this is a really significant divergence, and that's your number two. And then right here, 957 again, we get your third divergence. And when it's so extreme like this, I can show you many examples like this. When the one minute velocity is very extreme, when it just completely diverges, it means you know there's really some serious buying going on here. And then we move out a bit and we look at the five minute, and you can see the exact same story. So you get your most extreme print to the downside right here, followed by your first divergence, your second one, and your third one. And you can see if you draw a trend line, on the velocity from here to here, I'll even remove price, you can see how obvious there this is. There's obviously lots of buying going on in this area and buyers are about to um, you know, push the price up. Then if we look at the hourly, um, okay, so throughout this whole period to the downside, there was no significant um, hourly velocity prints to the downside. So you're looking at 0 0.007, 0 0.006, 0 0.008, 0 0.007. So nothing there really has me worried. And when price attacked the hourly trigger, 0 0.002. It doesn't get much lower than that, even for a $9 stock. And so there's no reason right here that you know this was anything unusual. Price moved up into the last 15 minutes of the hour. I talk about this all the time. <clears throat> when price moves up into the last 15 minutes of the hour, uh, so this move right here uh, was at 15.15, uh, and then price moves up right, right here into this last 15 minutes and closes higher than it did 15 minutes before. What that does is it gives you a less negative print going into the next hour, making it easier for price to break above the hourly trigger. So here's where we get the first break and I'm watching this, but I'm not ready to take a long yet because I need to see the hourly velocity flip positive. Right here is where the hourly velocity flips positive and we also get, you know, the one minute trigger crossing the hourly trigger here and the five minute trigger crossing the hourly trigger here. Price at 988. Now, if you remember back here, we had the daily trigger at 989, and that's a really big acceleration level. I love to buy breakouts above the hourly trigger. You know, sometimes it doesn't always work. Like um, this, you know, you got from 843 to nine bucks. That's a pretty nice move. And remember, in a very short period of time, June uh, 27th, June 28th, right? Over here, price breaks above 841, runs to 906. Now, um, if you notice, during these weeks, the reason why price didn't just run away after it broke above the hourly trigger is because of the nasty weekly velocity. Okay, so price is dealing with some harsh uh, weekly velocity to the downside here. And so you don't expect like these runaway moves. And you could see as the weekly velocity got less and less negative, 
price is able to make bigger and bigger attacks above the hourly trigger um, towards the weekly trigger. Okay, but still, over here, we have much less weekly velocity, much less negative weekly velocity. And so I was under the impression that a break above the daily trigger could lead to a nice attack of the weekly trigger in a day or two, which was at 1140. Now granted, SPY did sell off pretty hard, but you can see that once price broke above this key level, 988, I went long right here on this pop, okay? And I'm also looking at the one minute velocity. So on this move up, okay, how to spot a false breakout. On this move up, were there any divergences, bearish divergences? So we make our first high right here, and one minute velocity is 0 0.007. We make our second high right here, 0 0.009. And then uh, we make a slightly higher high, 0 0.008, okay, but that's only one, and it's very slight. And then when we make these new highs, we're moving with no divergences. So when there's no divergences, that's how you know it's a really strong move. Um, if we look at the five minute, same thing. Not one divergence on this chart. Not one. You see that? Every time price makes a higher high, um, velocity makes a higher high, which tells you that sellers are not in control here. Buyers are in control. When there's no velocity, buyers are in full control. And you can see price riding the one minute trigger the entire time. So if I was using the one minute trigger as my stop loss, Here's where I exited the position. But if you look at the one minute velocity, um, this is like, this is sort of an advanced technique, but it's called like a capitulation high. Um, this is also the moment where SPY started to sell really hard. And so I got out of the trade like, I think at 1036. Um, so I, like I just, you know, I, like when you get a capitulation bar and instead of price going higher, it just snaps back. That usually means that like the move that just happened, so let's say this move in terms of LU waves, if that's like one kind of wave, it's, it's done. Because as, as long as the one minute velocity continues to the upside, you expect price to continue to the upside. So as soon as one minute velocity is continuing to the upside, but price snaps back, it means that the move is done. And that's when it's time to exit the trade. So any questions on this hood trade? And then I'll move on to Netflix. Anyone? Nobody? All right. Um, okay, so that was the hood trade. Let's go to Netflix now. Okay, so here uh, we had Netflix coming off really good positive hourly velocity. So 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, right? Enough hourly velocity to make me think that as soon as price comes down to the hourly trigger right here, that it's gonna bounce, okay? So this was still Thursday. Um, where did we take the trade? Okay, right here, Friday. So over here, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna close this because I think it's slowing down some stuff. Okay, so uh, let's zoom in right here. This was where I took the trade. Okay, so um, on this break above the hourly trigger. So I'm looking at price action and I see an inverse head and shoulders. For all you technical analysis people, this is a pretty clean inverse head and shoulders, even though it is on a one minute chart. Um, and then I'm going to look at the velocity prints, start on the one minute. Okay, so here's the hourly trigger. Um, we come below and when we come, remember the hourly trigger is kind of like a trampoline. It's not necessarily a barrier where price cannot break through. A lot of times uh, price will pull back into the hourly trigger and then slingshot off it. That's how the hourly trigger works. It's like bouncy, like, um, like bringing a beach, a beach balloon underwater for like a, a bit and then letting go. That's how like the hourly trigger works. It's not necessarily like price makes contact and then immediately moves to the upside. So if I see something like this, price trying to sell through the hourly trigger, but popping right back above, that's like always in a pretty bullish sign right then and there. So I have my triggers on, um, five minute velocity, and I go long right here on this break. This is where I called it out. I said like big Netflix opportunity coming up because right here I saw price fight to get over the hourly trigger, rejected the one minute trigger and came right back above. So I was watching this and it looked exactly like an inverted head and shoulders. So I'm like, okay, I'm in the trade. I came right here. And the great part about this trade was that since we were so close to the hourly trigger, if price 
once I entered, which was right here at 236.45, if price at any point sold below the hourly trigger, that's 236.21. So it's a very, very small window for loss. And even though it's a lottery, which means that, I mean, it's ODT, so the contract expires on the same day, um, I knew that like I had at least 30 minutes to sit in this trade and see what happens. And then if nothing moves after 30 minutes and price is just right above the hourly trigger, then I'll cut because I'm going to get hurt on time decay. But right after um, this inverse head and shoulders, we pop up. I didn't sell, came back down, but we held the hourly trigger pretty well. And then we make this really nice move to the upside. And here is where I sold batch one right here at 241.74 because again, this should have been an explosive move to the upside. You know, you catch the hourly trigger and you're moving up, but if it was supposed to be an explosive move to the upside, why did the one minute velocity diverge immediately? Okay, so we come up here and we make a high of 241.04, one minute velocity is 0.249, and then we come here and we make a new high by 70 cents and the one minute velocity did not. Okay, 2495, 2496. So this is like immediately a red flag for me. I'm like, okay, I'm out of the trade. So I sold like maybe here or maybe like 241.62. I didn't sell immediately. I waited like a couple of minutes and then I realized. So then I got out of the trade and then it provided a perfect double dipping opportunity right here. So let's look at this, okay? Very important. Price sells below and then, you know, you're, you're looking for the one minute trigger to make an airplane off the five minute trigger. And the reason you're looking for that is because velocity is positive. So since velocity is positive, you're not expecting necessarily the one minute trigger to just sell down and price to go straight to the hourly trigger. You're expecting, you know, you're expecting a kind of like an airplane setup and price to lift back above off, off the hourly trigger. That's automatically your bias because you're above the hourly trigger. Let's say we were below the hourly trigger, like price was right here, then yeah, I would expect the one minute trigger to break below the five and price to start selling off to the downside all the way to 230. But since we're above the hourly trigger, okay, and I showed you guys the three hour look back trick. If you ever want to know if the if the one minute trigger is going to make an airplane or if it's going to sell below, like right here, this is what we're talking about. If you ever want to know if it's going to make an airplane or a cross, you look at the hourly velocity three hours behind. So right here, if the hourly velocity three hours ago is, if this is stronger hourly velocity than three hours ago, so one, two, three, okay? So this is a 0.2 and this is a 0.36. If you have a better hourly velocity in this hour than three hours ago, you're expecting an airplane. If not, then you're being on the lookout for a cross like this, okay? And this cross was devastating if you were holding calls because price went from like 243 to 236. And if you look at the three hour look back right here, let's take this hourly velocity print, 0.62, we go 1, 2, 3, 0.94. So since this hourly velocity print is less positive than three hours ago, we are not expecting an airplane, we're expecting a negative trigger cross, and that's what happened. Here, we had positive hourly velocity and greater than one, two, three hours ago. So I'm sitting in cash at this point, because I exited my trade right here, and I said, okay, looks like a great time to double dip. And so I got right back in this trade, and I bought on the cross above at about like 238.50, and then I got out at 241. But because the contracts were so cheap, these calls again went like 125 percent um, or even 175 percent so you know it's the NEMA rules are simple enough to just be in and out of contracts on like simple moves like this and then why did I sell right here I wrote it on the chat at that point I said the woman of velocity is diverging again so um, I buy here on the cross of two triggers and we come up and make this high 241.11 woman of velocity is, is 0.12 Okay, and then we come down. I'm chilling because I, I'm pretty confident the woman at trigger is going to give us a bounce, and that's exactly what happens. But when we come up here, again, the woman of velocity is 0.10. Over here is 0.12. So something's wrong here to me. Something's telling me that Netflix is not ready to just rip off the gate. Over here, when, when price ran like this, there was no divergences. It was just climbing. The woman of velocity was climbing, climbing, climbing. And that's what should have happened here if we were about to have a runaway move. But because there was one minute divergences right off the bat, both on this attempt and both on this and on this attempt as well, I started to think that, okay, we're not ready for a runaway move now. I'm going to sell. And then this was the price action. So Netflix actually closed, closed very bearishly. Three trigger cluster set up to the downside. Um, now let's go to UVXY. Um, anyone have any questions on the Netflix trade? Okay. 
Um, so UVXY, uh, this was also a banger. So let me show you guys what I saw here. So we always want to see how price is reacting like near the hourly trigger. So if we zoom in, uh, we can see that price sold below the hourly trigger, but immediately we have one minute divergences. So here's a negative 0 0.02 at a price of 12.16. Price sells down to 11.93, but it's a 0 0.021, 0 0.024, 0 0.021. So here's your one minute divergence. If we look at the five minute, um, okay, so no five minute divergences, but we had one minute divergence. Let's look if we printed a bad hourly velocity print. This is 0 0.02, nothing crazy, right? So we had no reason to think that this can't pop right back above the hourly trigger. Now, let's look at the Disky page at the same time. So this is 13.40 on Friday. So I'm watching the market too on the Disky page. So we have the Dow Jones, IYT, we have SPY, we have the QQQ, the IWM, and the IVB. So let's, what time was it? 13.40, I think it was. Let's double check just to make sure we get this right. Okay, um, 13.40, yeah. And you can see how well you can track the market when you're just looking at all of this at the same time. But where is 1340? Okay, right here. All right. So first and foremost, the DIA, this is a beer plane. Okay, so we spoke about this in the past. This is when the one minute trigger, and I'll just remove everything else so you guys can see this clearly. When the one minute trigger goes to the five minute trigger and then rejects, it's a really bearish sign. Okay, so we had this at 1336. Okay, so I had this on one screen, UVXY on another screen. And you know the DIA's biggest market, uh, the Dow Jones. Everything moves after the Dow Jones. So I see a bearish, a beer plane at just about 13:40. Okay, which is the same time UBXY crossed the hourly trigger. Now let's look at SPY at, at 13:40. Um, right here. Okay, so we have the, almost the exact same setup in SPY. A beer, uh, a beer plane right here. Um, let's remove everything else. Keep in price. Do so you guys see this? This is a beer plane. Five minute trigger, tr the one minute trigger trying to get to the five and pulls down. So, this is a very bearish sign. It's signifying that the trend is going to continue going down, just like an airplane would tell you that the trend is going to continue going up. And this is also at about 12, 1333. So, right before the UBXY breaks its hourly trigger. QQQ. Uh, so, let's do the exact same thing. You guys are going to know what to look for at this point. See this? 1333, seven minutes before UBXY breaks the hourly trigger. This is a beer plane again, okay? Um, over here, um, the IWM, uh, price is making like a fast market attack to the hourly trigger and we have a bearish one minute trigger, five minute trigger cross at 1337. So this cross right here is a bearish cross, right? We spoke about this and the bearish cross, uh, sent the IWM down six bucks in an in hour and a half. Um, the IBB's risk on risk off, um, I'm actually not going to discuss that right now. But so I'm watching all of this, okay, and then I'm also watching the mangums. And in the mangums, let's look at the exact same thing. Move all velocity because a lot of the times when I'm watching this, I'll just look at the trigger setups. So I'm looking at too many things at once to also track velocity. And so when I'm looking to go, when I was looking to go uh, long UVXY on Friday, meta, we had a bearish cross right here. And we cut through the hourly trigger. So we're already below the hourly trigger 20 minutes before I'm taking UVXY calls. Okay. Um, Apple, below the hourly trigger. And you guys see this? This is a... You know, this is a nasty beer plane. It's telling us price is about to go down. You see how close the one minute trigger gets to the five minute trigger? 19 cents and then rejects. So, you know, that's always going to resolve bearishly. And well, you could see the result. And then over here, right before I'm taking my UVXY calls, 12 minutes before, I see that Apple can't even break over the one minute trigger, which is, again, whenever the one minute trigger is doing something, it means that the move is strong. If the one minute trigger is holding support, the move is strong. If the one minute trigger is acting as resistance, the move is strong. Um, let's look at the hourly velocity. Yeah, so when you have bad downside hourly velocity, this is a 0.36 for 
For Apple, that's pretty strong. You know, for GME, we're looking for 0.1 to signify an explosive move. For Apple, 0.3, when the hourly velocity is nasty like this, you're going to expect 100% the one-minute trigger and the five-minute trigger to act as resistances. And look at the chart. It's exactly what happens. Five-minute trigger provides two uh, resistances right here, and price rejects off. One-minute trigger right here, and you can see this entire thing is one big bear plane. Um, if we look at Am Amazon, got the bearish trigger cross five minutes before I took the UVXY calls. So I see the, the bearish trigger cross. It's also a three trigger cluster to the downside at 1333. So you guys are starting to see how much goes into one play. When you're able to see all of this at once, you know the market's about to sell off and you see UVXY about to break above its hourly trigger. That's why I was calling for like a possible end of day crash. Uh, at like 2 p.m. yesterday because everything just looked really bearish. And here we have Google with the same bearish setup. Netflix um, only turned bearish all the way at the end of the day. So, you know, Netflix was still bullish then. And then Microsoft um, had the bearish trigger cross right here. The one minute trigger cross and the five minute trigger was under the hourly trigger. Um, when I was looking at it at like 1330, uh, it had rejected its one minute trigger and made a strong move down. So I said, all right, I'm gonna go long UVXY calls I'm not going to have, like, I'm not going to, um, uh, it's just going to be like a zero or hero play. And we bought right here 12.5 um, calls for nine cents at like 12.30. And they closed at 0 0.42. Uh, price closed at like 12.84. I started trimming at like 12.80. And then I was fully out. And then I left like a couple that closed at the last minute of the day. So those were the three trades. Um, that's the trading recap. And...